Bill O'Reilly is the host of The O'Reilly Factor on Fox News and the author of the bestseller, Killing Lincoln, the shocking assassination that changed America forever. Hey, Bill, welcome back. Good to see you. Larry, good to see you, man. Let's talk about politics. Rance, Rick Santorum now surging to the lead in four national polls, neck and neck, actually, in one. What's driving the surge? Is it his strength as a candidate or Mitt Romney's weaknesses? It's neither. It's ideology. Conservatives are bouncing from one to the next, and uh, they don't trust Mitt Romney at this point. So it's a purely ideological vote. And the polls right now don't really mean very much. It's the next debate at the end of the month. After that debate, then the polls will start to sharpen up. I know you're not a fan of the polls, but if you look in Michigan right now, the home right. state of Mitt Romney, his father was the governor there. Yeah. And in that state, according to the recent polls, Rick Santorum has taken the lead. If Rick Santorum beats Mitt Romney in Michigan, is Romney done? Romney's hair might even get disheveled if that happens. So you think that's not a, a good thing? But Romney hasn't lived there for 45 years, so I mean, it's a little but he calls overblown. It his home state. He, he has a couple of them actually. Wants. I mean, they, this is the first time they've seen him since uh, the Vietnam War. Come on, look, Romney has not been able to convince the right conservative voters that he's one of them. It's as simple as that. So all the conservative voters who were split before between Gingrich and Santorum, Gingrich has dissolved. They all go to Santorum and. That's why he's ahead. Can you see Rick Santorum as the GOP nominee? Sure, why not? I mean, he's a smart guy. He might do it. I still think Romney's going to get it, but I've been wrong before. Not much, but occasionally. In a head-to-head -head <laughs> race between <laughs> the GOP nominee and Barack well, Obama, depends, who has a better chance, Mitt Romney on the or Rick economy. Santorum? Lauer, you know this. It depends on the economy. Gas prices are, if they're $6 a gallon, you could get elected. All right? Come on. Obama's got problems on all fronts. No, if but I'm asking you... I'm not a, a generic Republican against Obama. I'm asking you which, whether Mitt Romney or Rick Santorum has the better chance against Obama. Well, I would say at this point in time, it's Romney because independents aren't right-wing ideologues. So they're more comfortable in the middle, and that's where Romney is. But it's all about the economy. That's kind of, what it's kind about. of a hard turn here, but let's turn to the death of Whitney Houston. All, all right. right, This is what you said on the show. Whitney Houston wanted to kill herself. Nobody takes drugs for that long if they want to stay on the planet. The hard truth is that some people will always want to destroy themselves, and there's nothing society can do about it. That's right. You that know that, that this has generated some controversy because people say, wait, addiction is a disease. All right. And if you are suffering from a disease, yeah. then you can't make the choice. You have no choice. Well, then they don't believe in free will, and I don't believe that anyone is a slave to addiction. I believe it is a disease. It's a mental disease, all right? But you have free will, and you can get through the disease, as millions of people have chosen to do. It's a lot of free will. You don't have free will when you get lung cancer. You do have free will when you're a crack addict. But it's very difficult. My point is that there are self-destructive people and that society does not grapple with them. We, looked, we the media, looked the other way on Whitney Houston. Everyone knew she was a drug addict for two decades. But wait, that, you, and you said this. You wrote this in your column. The media has no bleeping clue how to cover the death of That's Whitney right. Houston. That's because she was slowly dying for years and many in the press simply averted their eyes. We looked away. Bill, I have seen dozens of stories over the years. But they were sensationalized Detailing, detailing the addiction, the erratic behavior, the denial of addiction on okay. the part of Whitney Houston. They were, they were sensationalized to exploit the woman's condition, not try to help her. When's the last time you ever saw, you've seen a public service announcement from a famous person, a singer, an actor, and a, to say to the American public, you know, you don't want to be like Whitney Houston. Don't be like Elvis. Don't be like Janis Joplin. When was the last time you saw that? They don't exist. What, what, you know what we in the media do, Lauer? We wink, wink it. We Snoop Dogg it. We Willie Nelson it. Hey, oh yeah, they're stone. That's fine. And what message does that send? It's okay. I think it's, it's apples not and oranges okay. that you're comparing. I think on the one hand, the media did detail her troubles and did they highlight it. But at it the is. same time, I would agree that they also celebrated her talent, and her stardom. Name me one media commentator outside of myself who said, hey, Whitney, you better knock it off or you're going to be in the ground. But maybe one, they, Give me one. Well, listen, maybe people don't come out and say it like you do because that's the style of your show. But by covering her behavior they and detailing it. her actions over the years, in a way, that is shining no. a very bright light on it. If everybody in the show business community had said to Whitney Houston, hey, 
you're going to kill yourself. But that's different than journalists saying, Bill, are journalists supposed to be in the position of conducting interventions? They're supposed to be in the business of telling the truth. And the truth is, well, if you get into hard drugs, you can go any time. And by and showing that message her isn't behavior over now. the years, didn't we shine the light on no, that? No, because it wasn't put in any kind of a judgmental capacity at all. It was like a You think she was show. cast in a, in, a, in a positive light over these it last 15 years? It wasn't positive. It was, oh, look at this. Now she goes to rehab. And it wasn't, hey, Whitney, knock it off. It wasn't. It's never been that, ever. Let's move and on. It a, let's be. move on a little, because you and I could argue for hours. But of course, um, and I'd always be right, no matter I'm, how I, long. And it I was. know you would always think you're right. All on right. the subject of the flags flying at half staff in New Jersey on Saturday, the day she's laid to rest, Governor Christie has called for that. Is that the right idea? Yes, I think we should respect the life and talent of Whitney Houston. I said a prayer when I heard she died. This isn't a personal thing. This is a preventive thing. And I want society and the media to, to tell the truth about drug and alcohol addiction. It's hell. It's a horror. Let's stop exploiting it and start explaining it. Let's talk about your book, Killing Lincoln. No, okay. I don't want to do that. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> Gosh forbid. Um, 20 weeks on the bestsellers list, and you've got some other projects. Yeah, we're announcing Killing Kennedy. Will be uh, My next book comes out in October. It's in the uh, vein of Killing Lincoln, the same format, very quick. Um, this is what happened in the last uh, few months of John F. Kennedy's life. And we're filling in, we have stuff that's never been seen and heard before. Um, the president's life was chaotic. And there were a lot of similarities between Lincoln and Kennedy in the, in the uh, weeks and months before they both were assassinated. I have a feeling you'll have the same success with that that you have with this one. Thank you, Larry. I appreciate that, man. Good to see All you. All right, good to see you. Always nice to right. have you here.